Gluten-free diets have been hot in Hollywood in recent years, and everyone and their dog seems to have concerns about gluten. While celiac disease has been well recognized in the medical community for decades, a lot of people have concerns about gluten and gluten intolerance that aren't related to celiac disease. And this has caused a lot of confusion. So, does gluten deserve to be vilified? And should you be worried about eating gluten? Or is this craze just a Hollywood fad? Gluten literally means glue. But I think of it more of a, like a rubber band. It's a two-part protein that is derived from processing wheat and related grains. Tightly organized gluten, like you get from kneading dough, creates a protein matrix, leading to stretchiness and chewiness of your foods. Now most people recognize breads, cereals, baked treats as having a lot of gluten, and they all do, and that's unfortunately what fills most of my cabinets. But there are a surprising number of foods that have gluten in them that you may not recognize. And following a truly gluten-free diet can be a really arduous task, which is why grocery stores have entire aisles dedicated just to gluten-free foods. Celiac disease, also known as celiac sprue, is a well-defined autoimmune disorder in which the immune system reacts to a portion of the gluten molecule. This inflammation in the lining of the small intestine leads to a whole host of GI symptoms and eventually damages the lining of the small intestines. Over time, this can cause a severe malabsorption of nutrients, and that leads to a whole lot of different medical problems. The actual prevalence of diagnosed celiac disease in the U.S. is only about 1 in 3,000 people, but it is estimated that up to 1 in 150 people may have the autoimmune component. However, most of these people remain undiagnosed because they have mild or minimal symptoms. Obviously, an autoimmune disorder such as celiac is a bad thing. But is gluten bad for everyone? Well, the short answer is no. The vast majority of people tolerate gluten in their diet just fine, and they don't have any symptoms when they eat gluten. However, many people without proven celiac disease have been labeled as gluten intolerant or gluten sensitive, and they feel a whole lot of health benefits when they go gluten free. So what's the deal? So I think there's three possible explanations for this. Number one is standard testing is not 100% accurate and does occasionally miss the mark, especially early in the course of the disease. Number two, a, a true subset of non-celiac gluten sensitivity does exist. In theory, this is um, a difficulty in metabolism and digestion of the gluten protein. They don't have the severe inflammation, intestinal damage, and malnutrition of celiac disease. And number three, and probably one of the most plausible explanations, is that going gluten-free leads to an improved overall diet, a decrease in the amount of carbohydrates and calories, and eating healthier makes anyone feel better. A lot of people ask me, should I be tested for celiac disease? Well, there's a lot of different reasons to test for celiac disease. The first one is for anyone who has persistent GI symptoms. The next reason is for anyone who has unexplained weight loss, vitamin deficiency, anemia, liver disease, among a whole host of other things. The third group would be people who are at high risk, namely people with autoimmune disorders. The fourth would be if you have a really strong family history of proven celiac disease. And the next question is, is what test should I have done? Well, the historical gold standard for celiac disease diagnosis has been a biopsy of your small intestine. And that's a quite invasive test, but oftentimes the one that is the most certain of diagnosis. Newer blood tests are much better than they used to be at making the diagnosis. And also there's genetic testing, and the type of test you should have done should be directed at the probability of your diagnosis. I hope you've learned a lot about gluten and its related medical issues. 
It's a complex issue for sure. If you have questions about this topic or believe you may have gluten-related disease, you should of course see your doctor.